Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world and last 24 or so hours. I want to have for you on this snowy evening of my friends. Well, we are going to kick things off discussing those rumours you might have seen floating around regarding AMD NVIDIA GPU codes. So a bit of backstory in case you have somehow missed these rumours floating around the internet, but essentially what we have here is several code names for AMD Navi GPUs have surfaced within the Mojave source code, which of course is the Ma Apple Mac OS, but these are not what they seem. But the original user found code names for Navi 16, Navi 12, Navi 10, and Navi 9 within the source code for the latest update back in November. But unfortunately, Navi 16 isn't real from what we know at least. I'm not 100% saying that it doesn't exist, but at least from what we've heard, AMD, 6, AMD 16, Navi 16 isn't a thing. So as I said, these have been floating around in the public domain since last November, shortly after the Mojave update launched, and they were within the driver package named AMD Radeon 6000 HW Services KEXT, and within this was discovered those entries regarding the AMD Navi GPUs, but it's basically all coming down to the C++ programming language syntax and when compiled into a script, it basically looked at first glance, at least, like AMD Navi codenames. But when actually simplified a little bit, you get, well, the original is a massive tongue twister, but bear with me. We have the ZN38 AMD Radeon X6000 AMD Radeon HW Services Navi 10 Match Table E. And then when demangled, it is AMD Radeon X6000 AMD Radeon HW Services Navi colon colon match table. Not exactly the most exciting stuff I know, but the long story short is that from what we know, Navi 16 isn't a thing, and is this surfacing in Mac OS isn't really a big deal. Just to kind of remind you all um, of our recent video where we had some exclusive information that according to what we have heard from our sources, and this could very much be incorrect, outdated information, blah blah blah, it's always the same case, just because it came from our source instead of another source doesn't really change that, but we've heard that it's going to be launching in the summer, it's going to be announced at E3, and the main Navi GPU is going to be launching next year. So we haven't really heard anything here that kind of goes against that, unfortunately. But we also have something from Team Green up next, as we have some news regarding the GTX 1660 and 1660 Ti. Now the source of this is an article posted by WCCFTech.com, which of course will be linked in the description below this video. But what they have done here in this article is they have rounded up a bunch of information about the 1660, which of course we have discussed numerous times. But while they have touched on some previously discussed details regarding these graphics cards, they actually also have some new information for us. And according to them at least, these came from their sources. Now the main thing that we see here is that we're going to be seeing a difference in memory between the two versions here. The GTX 1660 is apparently going to have 6 gigs of GDDR5 memory with a 192-bit bus and it's going to be clocked at 4000 megahertz, whereas the clock speed is going to be 1530 megahertz based and then a 1785 megahertz boost and it's going to be featuring a TU116300 die. So what is the difference between that and the tyre here you ask? Well we do see the same amount of memory that being 6 gigabytes but we see GDDR6 instead of GDDR5 which is a very important distinction as I'm sure you will agree. We do see however the same 192 bit bus being used here but we do see a memory clock of 6000 megahertz which of course is a significant upgrade versus the non-tie counterpart and the, the base clock is going to be 1500 megahertz and the boost is going to be 1770 and we do see a base on a TU116400 die which interestingly has the same board number that being PG161 as the RTX 2060 and apparently we're going to be seeing these cards launch around Valentine's Day. Now of course if that's true it's not going to be all that long before we find out whether or not these leaks are actually accurate as of course again even if it's from a trustworthy source who's normally correct 
their information could be outdated, incorrect, based on old information, anything, or it could, of course, be 110% on the money. So we're, gonna, we're not going to have to wait and see long, but we are going to have to wait and see, unfortunately, but still interesting to see a distinction in terms of the memory between the 1660 and of course the 1660 tie but that isn't the only nvidia related piece of news i have for you today no 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 we actually have something rather interesting regarding them and apple of all people so before i go into the nitty gritty the meat of this i just want to say that this article is the source article, should I say, is from Apple Insider. So, of course, there is going to be a link to them in the description below this video as they have been doing a little bit of digging regarding this as apparently there is a bit of bad blood brewing between Apple and NVIDIA. And apparently this disagreement between the two companies has caused Apple to withdraw support for NVIDIA cards in the most recent macOS updates, which, of course, I touched on just earlier with that AMD Navi thing. And ever since, anyone who has NVIDIA connected to their machines, whether it be an old PCIe workstation or what have you, have been facing rendering issues and, the worst thing of all, poor performance. And NVIDIA have even spoken on this, basically saying that this is down to Apple apparently leaving the update and support for the graphics drivers on approval. So they've just not actually approved it to go live on the actual system. And naturally, users have been saying to Apple, hey, can um, can we have these updates, please? Because I'd really like to not be penalised for my choice of graphics. And unfortunately, at least according to this report, their cries have gone unheard. And according to a developer that Apple Insider spoke to, there is a quote-unquote quiet hostility excuse me, between Apple employees and NVIDIA's. So you might be scratching your head going, huh? Why are these two kicking each other's shins like a couple of boys in the schoolyard? Well, apparently it comes down to, at least according to what Apple Insider have digged up, some deals between the two companies that have went a bit poorly and go back actually over a decade. So this is not something that's happened over a couple of days, like, oh, Jim from Apple didn't thank Bob from NVIDIA for the coffee you brought him the other day. This has been going back quite some time. Apparently Apple was forced to delay a product due to some issues that NVIDIA had producing the GeForce 6800 and apparently they were then to blame for faulty MacBook Pros. Apple sought AMD's help when Intel wasn't, wasn't happy with uh, NVIDIA's technology and yeah, we've just got a bit of sort of um, back and forth between the two companies. Things have kind of soured over the years and apparently we have now gotten the straw that has broken the camel's back. So, not too brilliant for consumers, in fact, really, really bad for consumers, as I'm sure you will agree. It's not really great to have customers penalised for their choice in graphics just because of some feud between your company and another, at least, of course, if this report is correct. So, hopefully we can see this rectified soon, but obviously that is very much down to Apple, from what I'm understanding here. You know, NVIDIA can release the graphics drivers, but if Apple won't allow them to go on, then there's not really much they can do just annoying for the customers who are stuck in the middle with this poor performance and ramifications from this when they of course have nothing to do with any of this great for amd of course you know brilliant for them in the short term but definitely a bit of an ouch in the long term for anyone with nvidia in their mac system so with that said let's move on to our final topic for today which unfortunately is going to be a bit of a sour note as we have yet another security vulnerability for you today so we have to thank for the discovery of this particular security exploit the security firm by the name of embeddy and as the name kind of suggests they focus on operating systems and embedded devices and what they've actually done is discovered some pretty concerning issues with them uh, sorry for firmware of a widely used ThreadX real-time operating system and is used on various things such as the Marvel Avastar Wi-Fi chip, the 88W8897, which is used in a metric ton of devices across the market, including, unfortunately, the Xbox One and the PS4, as well as routers, servers, set-top boxes, and Lord knows how many other devices. Now, they did discover quite a few bugs here, and of course I'm going to link the source for this in the description below this video, but the most concerning is a block pool overflow that requires some input from you, the user, to actually exploit. 
Basically, ThreadX scans for a new wireless network every five minutes, and if a network with some malicious packets is picked up, the bug gets exploited, and the code then gets executed, which unfortunately then gives you a compromised device, one where the person doing the attack could gain full access. Now, at the moment, at least at the time of recording, of course, this very much could change soon, and hopefully it does. There doesn't seem to be a blanket fix for this, but given that it's firmware, it could very much be simple, assuming there is a simple fix for it, for people like Microsoft and Sony to actually update their software and sort out what is actually going on. But even if they aren't actually able to fix it soon, if perhaps there's a bit more work than I'm realising here, because of course I'm not a console developer, there's probably more going on behind the curtain than I realise, I would hope to at least get a statement from Microsoft and Sony regarding how much people need to be concerned regarding this. You know, perhaps it's only going to be um, a very small chance this is even going to happen, and they are aware of it and working on blah blah, blah and on, a, on a fix and blah blah blah. Perhaps even give people tips to avoid it, that sort of thing. But yeah, not exactly brilliant. The seems the last couple of years have been the years of security vulnerability just raising their ugly head, like hi. Nice to meet you guys. I'm Spectre. Oh, I'm Meltdown. You know, it's just not really great that every other day it feels like there's a new security vulnerability. Anyway, you can find the link to Betty's article in the description below this video if you wish to give it a read. I would highly suggest you do so. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. So thank you again for watching. Bye-bye.